Hello folks, uh, this is going to be a tutorial on using Logic Pro for those of you that are using that for your project that uh, have access to it. So uh, what you'll do is when you open up Logic, uh, what you'll see is, uh, is this screen. Uh, I've added a track here just for my voice for this, uh, this demo, but uh, the top tracks are what I uh, uploaded to the computers at OU, and uh, and that's also in the shared drive, so you can download this uh, exact project. So a uh, couple things about uh, using Logic for those of you that have not used it that much. Uh, what you can do is uh, solo everything. So uh, what I'm going to do for this demonstration is we're going to listen to the drum tracks on this project and do a little EQing, set up uh, reverb send, and uh, choose some reverbs. But I'm just going to give you some general ways that I like to work. And I'll show you some uh, compression plugins. I did this in class once, but uh, several of you were not there for that. So this will be a little review. Uh, if you know how to do all this stuff, obviously you don't need to watch this video. So uh, in the left hand here, uh, this is our, our tracks window, and you can see everything is just spread out uh, as, as you would expect it to in a DAW. Uh, here are the solo buttons, the mute buttons. So because we're going to be listening to drums, I'm going to set up, excuse me, <coughs> I'm going to set up a uh, cycle mode here for a spot where we've got lots of drums happening. So we'll just be looping this this little section of drums for working with it. Um, I think I referred earlier in the class that one thing I like to do if you have uh, oh, I moved that. Uh, if you have uh, a lane here that's pretty low level one thing that's very helpful right from the start before you do any mixing would be to double click on it so you get this inspector window then go down to your functions and do this normalize uh, function so it maximizes all of your record levels or all the playback levels so it's really easier to work with and you don't have to try and boost audio artificially in the mixer window so if I double click on this again this will minimize this inspector window down here so there now it's gone. So let's just listen to the overhead. Uh, this is a stereo track uh, originally. Uh, I broke it out here uh, in the Logic version as a left and a right. But if you uh, listen to it separately, this channel is the left channel. And it's only the left ear that we're hearing stuff in. The other channel is the right channel. So it's uh, it's a little deceptive, but you, I think you treat these as if it were a single stereo channel, and it's easier to work with that way. Let's solo now the snare and the kick, and just listen to the, the drum sound overall. That's not a not a bad drum sound, I would say. It's uh, recorded pretty well. So let me uh, show you a couple things that I like to do. Uh, let's let's concentrate on this uh, kick drum. It's technically called a bass drum, but uh, to differentiate it from uh, electric bass, uh, industry standard is to call it the kick. Um, purists would, would hate that, and drummers don't really like that. So, what do we hear? We hear a lot of snare bleed, and we hear quite a bit of the cymbals. So, to deal with that, let's go into some EQ and try and concentrate on getting the most kick sound that we want, and not as much of the other sounds. So, if you'll go into the mixer window, the shortcut in Logic is Command-2, but uh, you can also go up here to the window and go to, um, 
where is it? Um, oh, there it is. <laughs> Open mixer. Duh. I'm so used to the shortcuts, I don't know the old ways. So uh, that brings up our mixer. And so here, all the tracks are, are going uh, vertical as channel strips, like you'd see in a uh, standard analog mixer. Our, uh, there are a couple ways to get to EQ. Uh, if you look here at audio effects, you can actually go and insert an audio effect and go down to EQ and go to channel EQ. Or you've got a couple other uh, EQs to choose from. The channel EQ in Logic is really nice. And actually the easiest way to do that is it's built in to a whole lane by itself. So this is the same as going through all of those other uh, setups and you know routing for plugins. So let's just click right in this window. So here we have a really nice uh, multi-band EQ. And I'll zoom in a little bit. So let's listen. We'll see the uh, real time, what the frequencies are with this analyzer. Let's kick that in. So now we can see exactly where these frequencies are falling. So this curve represents most of the low end of the kick drum but you see a couple other little things happening up here. And that's sort of the attack part. So let's try and get rid of uh, a lot of the simple stuff by using a low pass filter. Remember that allows lows to pass. So I'm going to kick that in so it's highlighted. A couple ways you can just drag to the left and that'll cut off the high frequency stuff. You see there's a lot of stuff happening up here. You can change the slope of this EQ by going down here to the Q. Uh, remember, Q is quality factor, and the higher the number, the, the steeper the curve. So you see it does uh, some weird things. So it, it sort of, if you make it too steep, starts boosting signals right around the uh, cutoff point which is not a good thing. So let's back that off. Yeah, we don't want to boost signals. Now let's drag it over a little more. Get, let's see if we can get a little more of these symbols gone. Okay, see how that went away pretty effectively. Pretty cool. Now, is there uh, another frequency you want to uh, accent? Because we can do that. We've got all of these other bands here to, uh, to play with. It might be nice in the mix to get a little more sound of the attack. Let me uh, show you one thing that I always like to do, and that is reference. All right, let me minimize that for a second. Let's listen. Let's listen to what we've done in the context of the rest of the drums, and we should also do it in relation to the rest of the tracks too. So you never EQ in isolation. You always want to reference how it sounds in the rest of the mix. So let's listen to this kick drum now. Uh, to my ears, I might want to be hearing a little bit more of the attack of this kick drum. So let me click back here, bring up our EQ that we've done. Let's see if we can find some of the attack of this kick drum. And we'll use one of our uh, uh, parametric EQs here. So let's choose, we can choose any one, but I'm just going to click on this that's in the 250 hertz range. And let's make it pretty narrow. I'm going to click down here and let's, oh, let's drag it up so that it's a narrower band of frequencies. And let's just uh, raise this up and then let's sweep it left and right to see where we can find that attack in the kick drum. And let me unsolo everything else here.
Okay, now let's take a listen to the kick. So there's some, there's some of the attack right there at 360 hertz. It doesn't sound very natural. Let's uh, broaden out the, uh, this Q here. Let's take this number a little lower. And let me turn this off and on so you can hear the difference. not sounding natural at all, but let's listen in relation to the rest of the drum kit and see how we like it. Okay. So that's using additive uh, EQ, which I told you in class it's not good, but I was lying to you. It actually is good um, in, in certain circumstances. Now, look at this. You see how we have red? This 1.1 means we want 1.1 decibels above zero. We're into distortion when we go above zero. So let's back this off a little bit. So I'm going to drop that uh, about three decibels or so. And I'm going to click here to turn that off so it, it uh, zeroes it out. We can see if we're peaking again. And we're right on the edge of these. So let's just back these all down a little bit so we don't get into trouble. I always watch in this uh, stereo channel. If you peak here, uh, you see I've really lowered the stereo so that we're not peaking in the stereo channel. So make sure that we're never in the red in any of these uh, meters. Red means bad. Okay, so we've got, uh, I think, a nice kick drum sound. Let's now work on the snare a little bit. So I'm going to solo the snare, and let's listen to that. So we've got a lot of bleed there uh, from the bass drum and the hi-hat, which is right uh, above it, or that's actually the, uh, the, the right symbol. So let's try some, some EQing of the snare. Let's try and first of all get rid of some of the bass uh, drum. Let's kick in our high pass filter. It allows the highs to pass and it should filter out our lows. I'll turn on this analyzer. So we can see where these frequencies are. So we're seeing, you know, not as much low frequencies, obviously, as the other channel, but let's drag that over. Let's make our cue a little bit steeper. And let's keep moving it over. We can knock. Uh, you can click in this area too and drag up or down. Click and drag up or down to change where it is. So now we're hearing only the attack part of that kick drum, which is probably okay when we hear it in, uh, in perspective. Let's get rid of some of the symbols by going over here to the low pass filter. Let's, oops. Let's. Okay, so I, I'm uh, changing the cue here. That's probably about right. Now I can click here and drag down to move this over. That gets rid of a lot of the symbol.
So you see uh, the snap is what we want here if we want to brighten this up. So let me put in this filter at uh, 75. Let's make it a little narrower. And let's just see if we can find that snap so it cuts through. So. Run that out a little bit. It's a little ringy. Let's we're gonna see if we can get rid of some of that ring too. So let me let's uh, listen to that ring. Let me go to another. use this band and let's just see if we can find find that ring. I'm gonna make it pretty narrow band by dragging up uh, up here. Let's find that band. That's sounding pretty pretty nasty, right? That's what we want is to find the uh, the nasty sound. So let's I'm gonna broaden that out a little bit. Now let's just see what happens if we drop this. It's still a little ringy. that a little broader maybe okay I'm gonna close this and let's solo all the drums uh, and if you click on the solo button and drag it'll select a bunch without having to push all the separate buttons Okay, I mean it's sounding pretty reasonable. Uh, the the overhead drums are not sounding too bad right now, and that's actually filling in a lot of frequencies that we're taking out on these two channels. So you hear a nice kick in there. The snare is pretty nice. So let's. Uh, Let's just call that done. Uh, obviously, you'll do this uh, to your own taste and get the drum sound that you're after. This is really just a rough guideline on how to do this. Uh, next item, let's go up to the vocal. Let me just show you how I deal with vocals. I'm going to solo that, take these out, and let me find a different area to uh, go into cycle mode. And we'll listen up here to his voice. All and everything I might bump into, I much prefer doing no harm. Well, I'm holding my Let's breath, not so much go to the mixer. songs about death, but the fact I can't move. One thing that I will typically do to almost any and every vocal would be to go up here to vocal effects or audio effects and add some compression. So in um, excuse me, in Logic, we have this uh, mono compressor, which is really pretty useful. So let's kick in this mono compressor, and you've got a bunch of choices of types. So you can see uh, various brands it, it's emulating. So let's just uh, let's go to this classic VCA. And let me explain all of the knobs. Uh, input gain is we'll we'll deal with that, but it, you need to have enough signal coming in, which we got plenty of signal coming in. The threshold says where this is going to start kicking in. This is the ratio. 
So it's the input decibels versus how much is coming out. So 1.5 to 1 means that for every change of 1.5 decibels that come into this compressor, the change will only be one decibel on the outside. Uh, makeup, this is how to level it off on the uh, uh, output side. So let me just play this and we'll play with some of these meters and I'll show you what we'll do. All in everything I might bump into, I much prefer doing no harm. Well, I'm holding my This is showing so much. The, the meter showing how much uh, compression is being added. So you'll see the, the needle move farther to the left when more compression is being added. So if I change the threshold, in everything I might bump into, I much prefer doing no So harm. now there's hardly any well, because we're not meeting so that threshold of when it starts operating. Death, now watch this. Desperately trying to shrink, avoid making a stink and knock rare vintage photos of Cholga. Okay, so you see the threshold allows the, the compressor to work at earlier and earlier, uh, lower, lower decibels of input. Now, this is the other one. The ratio is the big thing. The higher the ratio, the more squashed the sound. So let's listen to it as I raise this ratio all in everything i might bump into i much prefer doing no harm well i'm holding my breath not so much because the song's about death but the so if you listen to that it sounds very squashed i would call it uh, what what it means is there's very little difference between his loud sounds and his soft sounds uh, this is a sound i don't like to hear and in most cases, and you know, unless it's a really driving rock song. song. So uh, let me back it off until what I think we're, we're getting the best detail from his vocals without it sounding overly compressed. So this is 7.1 to 1. Let's take it back somewhere between maybe 2 and 3. All in everything I might bump into, I much prefer doing no harm. Well, I'm holding my breath, not so much because the song's about death, but the fact I can't move. Desperately trying to shrink, avoid me. Okay, uh, that sounds pretty natural, and yet we're seeing uh, or we're hearing a lot of the detail of his, his, his vocal, all his words are coming through really clearly. So let's, uh, let's listen now. In relation to the rest of the track, I'm going to take it out of solo. All in everything I might bump into, I much prefer doing no harm. Well, I'm holding my breath, not so much because the song's about death, but the fact I can't move. A little hot. Desperately trying to drop it a little bit. Avoid making a stinking knock rare vintage photos of Cholgosh and Goldman right out of their groove. So uh, it does make a, a difference there in what we're hearing. Um, let's, uh, let's go over to the guitar. Uh, one thing you uh, obviously can hear is that the vocal track here and the guitar track were recorded simultaneously. So there is guitar bleeding into the vocal and vice versa. Let me, let me solo this guitar so you see how much bleed there is over on this channel. So there's a lot of vocal on this track, which uh, had to do with how it was recorded, and uh, there's not a whole lot we can do because the uh, range of the guitar is so broad, it's got really low range right in the heart of the vocal range, and then we need the high range. So there's not a lot we can do to get the vocal out of this track. So I wouldn't recommend even trying to do it. But what we can do is position this guitar to a different spot than dead center. So here's our, our pan. So the pan positions where we are in the stereo mix. So I'm going to take this guitar all over all the way over here, uh, so it's about 9 o'clock, 
That's not all the way left, but it's mostly left. General rule is don't take everything all the way unless it's something you really want to draw attention to. So usually, you know, around nine o'clock will give us a nice stereo separation. So let's solo these two and see how the guitar and voice are working. All and everything I might bump into, I much prefer doing no harm. Well, I'm holding my breath, not so much because the songs. So you hear how it moved over to the left side. Now there is another guitar, which was an overdub, which is this electric guitar. So let's take a listen to what the electric guitar is doing. We have some opportunities here. Let's find a place where the electric is actually playing. So we have this nice picky stuff. Uh, we could add some effects here. Let's see what happens if we uh, add some delay to this. So let's go to a, uh, a stereo delay. So delay designer, mono to stereo. This could do some fun stuff for us. Uh, a lot of these have presets. So there's uh, simple, uh, complex, uh, it's got filtered things, and you can, you can play with all of these. But let's just go over to a, a simple, and let's use a, a quarter note alternating pan. Um, what we'll have to do to use this effectively is figure out what the original tempo of the song is and set that up in logic for this to make sense rhythmically. Alternating pan means it'll move from left to right to left to right. So let's listen to this. See that? That doesn't make much sense right now because of uh, our tempo is not set. And also this is a uh, triplet feel, so we'll have to set that up too. I think we'll have to go back to um, uh, dotted. And let's go to dotted delay. Find our tempo. It's one, two, three. So let's let's take our tempo. Let's, let's see if we're around 76 beats per minute. So I just clicked here on our metronome and I dragged down to get it uh, to a spot where I could try it. Okay, so that's not very satisfying at all, is it? <laughs> so what we can do is um, change our mix. So, uh, in this wet to dry, you can change how much of this effect you're hearing in the playback. Let's listen to it again here. Sounds pretty messy now. Let's listen to it though in with the rest of the guitar and vocal. And the people want more at the records I need. I think I'm too fat for indie music. Local beer spills on the floor and the people want more at the record store show with about an hour and a half left to go. Set a technique about springing a leak in his locker. They don't make pre-faded yellow pants for fellas like me. You know, I think I'm too fat for indie music. Local beer spills on. Yeah, it's hard to hear. Uh, let's let's get the electric out of the mud. So 
Let's find out where, where we want to EQ the electric to hear more of the, uh, I think that mid-high is what we're missing. On the floor and the people want more at the record store show with about 45 minutes left to... Okay, let's, let's get rid of that delay, because that is really annoying. So, uh, the eighth note. See how that works. You know, I think I'm too fat for indie music. They don't make blue faded yellow pants for fellas like me. You know, I think I'm too fat for indie music. Local beer stills on the floor and the people want more. Store show, which is over and done, so let's go. Okay, uh, yeah, so I don't think that's very satisfying at all, but it shows you something you can uh, play with to get a nice effect on that guitar. So let's uh, listen now. Oh, let's, uh, let's go back to the mixer and do one more thing quickly. Let's take this electric guitar over to the right side and let's listen to the bass. This is the other instrument that really needs some compression so let's go over here to compressor and I like this I just have to like this classic VCA Let's listen to the uh, bass and the drums together because that has to work. The main thing you're listening for here is the bass in relationship to the kick drum. And I think there's nice separation, you can hear those clearly. If they're in the same range, you actually have to EQ around so that the uh, uh, bass is not in exactly the same frequency range as the kick drum, because then you can't hear one or the other. You know, I think I'm too fat for indie music. They don't make they I'm going to select all the drums here. Let's take the Okay, I balanced out the drums a little better so it's not as overpowering. This guitar, I think, can come back a little bit. So one thing we don't have yet would be an AUX channel. And little reverb might be good on, um, well, let's, uh, let's try some reverb on the, uh, the snare and the drums. So let's set up a send. So if you look over here to sends, I'm gonna select 
three channels by just shift clicking in this area. And that means it'll uh, put a send on all of those. So let's set up bus one. And here's bus one. Uh, we, this will be our reverb one. If I click there, I can name it just so that we remember what it is. And now in the, the effects, let's find a reverb. Um, I'm not sure which ones you guys have. I'm just going to uh, do a, a stereo reverb here. They're always presets, so we can select, um, you know, a long, bright verb, which would be, um, yeah, it might be nice on the uh, snare drum. So now let's bring some of the snare drum into this reverb and see what it sounds like. You know, I think I'm too fat for indie music. They don't make. So that's a lot of reverb, right? So I bring some in to the, the other two drums. Let's see what some sounds like on our electric guitar. So let's put the electric guitar into bus one here. You know, I think I'm too fat for indie music. I'm going to turn off the delay. Store show with about 45 minutes left to go. Uh, generally, reverbs don't sound good on bass instruments, so I'm going to never put reverb on a kick drum or an electric bass unless I want something really specific. So, uh, so anyway, this is uh, it's starting to sound good. I'll probably spend another hour messing with things, maybe trying to find a better delay here for the electric guitar. Um, just checking out uh, the vocal. I, I like it without reverb, but I mean, uh, you certainly could add reverb to it. See what that sounds like. So uh, feel free to experiment with all of these. Try some radical settings, see what they all do. Twist knobs, boost levels. Uh, just, uh, I think the important thing is to try and experiment so that you know what sounds good to your ears. So anyway, I hope uh, this has been helpful and uh, email, email me questions, give me a call on my cell phone. Um, I'll be around. So I will uh, talk to you folks again soon. Bye-bye.